our floor show traders, Keith Fitzgerald and Peter Tuckman, live from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Peter, what's behind this recovery, especially with the Nasdaq right now that we're, we're hitting with 56 minutes left to trade? You know what? I, I have to admit, Liz, that was quite a mouthful. Yeah. I mean, everything that you just laid out, is, it, it completely throws me off guard because there's so many moving parts to this puzzle. Right? You're seeing, you're seeing the market's overreaction on the downside and on the upside. Obviously, the fact that there's so much dissent within the Federal Reserve and their governors coming out at different times, the fact that they don't speak in one voice, and I know they're not supposed to, but it can be so confusing to the marketplace. So what you're seeing is people... You you know, it's almost like we call the old fat finger trade. Everybody is trying to adjust themselves around the yield, which has been a big deal, around oil priced up, which is affecting the yield, around the PPI, CPI, all those numbers, trying to understand how to position themselves. How, what does that mean for the market? What does it mean for a June cut? And then just when they're about to adjust themselves, another person from the Federal Reserve Board comes out and says something completely different. So I really think that, you know, when the buyers come in, the sellers sellers evaporate. When the sellers come in, the buyers evaporate. So what you're seeing is just this, this big sort of cloud. And it's, it's, it's sort of irrational in so many ways. You know, when you see the, the market tell you what it thought of the fact that people were anticipating three cuts, and then they started talking about no cuts, and then two cuts, and then the PPI number, which was disappointing, and we've seen now a number of disappointing numbers come out. They sold the living heck out of the market. Then today you're seeing the whole tech sector, which has been oversold in three days in a big way, rally back. So I think it's a little bit of confusion, and I think you're seeing with a little bit of electronic trading that when they see the momentum of buyers come in, the sell side just evaporates. And the same thing on the other side. That's why you're seeing these o -o over overdone mm. moves. Yeah, I'm not sure a lot of people would have expected a 270-point gain on the NASDAQ, which is what we have right now. Folks, we put it on the lower bug because it is on track for a record for the tech-heavy index. Uh, Keith Fitzgerald, you actually started buying yesterday. You bought Apple, you bought Palantir, you added to some other positions, and you did not sell NVIDIA, correct? No, I did not. As a matter of fact, we're having a very relaxed day today with a big smile on our face. We're probably going to head out to the beach early. You know, <laughs> this is highlight something that's really interesting. Peter addressed to it, this ping ponging of sentiment, right? I get it very simple. What stocks are people going to regret they don't own in a few years' time? And I look for the panic selling in those names. When I see it, I'm like a Viking at an all-you-can-eat buffet, Liz. <laughs> Yeah, and when you look at the Fed Fund's futures, which is also what Peter just just talked about, which scaled back over the past 72 hours, you know, when I think about where we were just two days ago, three or two days ago, the odds were, I don't know, for a June rate cut, they were certainly better. They were at 58 percent, and that was Tuesday, yeah. and now they're at a measly 23 percent, July 48 percent. They had been on Tuesday. Uh, I've got this right here, 69 percent. So, I, I mean, honestly, when you think about the opportunities, Peter, where are you watching the flows on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange? You know, look, I think it's really important. A day like yesterday, after we had one of the most spectacular quarters we had to start off the year since 2019, yes, we've had four days over the last 12 and a half weeks where the market almost pull, pulled, you know, re retraced less than even 1%, and everybody is already running for the hills. Yesterday was nothing more than an opportunity. People should be sitting back, just like Keith said, and having a shopping list in front of them of the stocks that they thought were a bit frothy, but they've been dying to own, like the NVIDIAs that were trading in the high 900s, coming into, you know, we're using these catastrophous words, you know, uh, like correction mode and all of these things. I think they're irrelevant in a market post-COVID where things move where we've had, you know, you can be in a bull market at 11 o'clock and be in a bear market by the market's close. Yes, so that is the true. Old terminology, the old term terminology is irrelevant. So I think we should literally look at yesterday as nothing more than a great opportunity. It's like when you see your favorite leather jacket go on sale at Macy's. You don't go running for the hills. You go into the store, you buy, you buy it. it. <laughs> so when you, see, when you see NVIDIA come in, a stock that's been the biggest mover, last February it was at 108. 
two, a week and a half ago was at 960. It came into 836. That is nothing more than a buying opportunity, as Keith okay. said, for the long term. We can't look at this market from day to day. We need to look at the long picture. Well, these are flash dips. I coined that term, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and Keith, why aren't you buying small and mid caps or at least doing it yesterday? Yesterday, at the lows of the session, you saw the Russell 2000 dip into, well, but nearly 6% to the downside, getting awfully close to a 10% correction, well, 4% away. I, you know, I worked in local news. We always over-dramatize stuff. But, uh, yes. Keith, you're, you're not picking some of the small and mid caps. There is a reason for that. What is it? There is a reason for that. I've done a lot of research over the last 40 something years. I think that the money in today's economy is going to run to the really big fortress like balance sheets where there's the liquidity and the depth of market and the ability to change the world we live in. So, yes, there can be some great speculative names in that smaller cap space, but I'm going to go with the big names because those are the names that are going to be there three, five, ten years down the road and I can count on them. Okay, good to see you both. A lot of action here. Peter, Keith, you give us great perspective. Uh, to recap, folks, the March producer price index, that's inflation at the wholesale level, that came in for the month a tick lighter than expected.